welcome again to the next webinar, next and last webinar in this our series of webinars that replaces the expert meetings and workshop on statistics uh, for SDGs that were planned to take place last week in uh, Budapest. Uh, and the topic today is data transmission and regional reporting. Uh, the meetings are organized by the UNEC Steering Group on Statistics for SDGs, and uh, this particular one today by its staff team on data transmission. And the webinar will be moderated by Anne Corp from United Kingdom. In the previous three webinars, over 100 people were participating, so we expect also good participation uh, today. And uh, after the, all these webinars, we will have also a, a short evaluation questionnaire where we will ask people to share how they found the webinars and uh, if there are any proposals, how, what to improve or how to uh, make, uh, make uh, them better. Uh, today's webinar will be a little bit more technical one compared to the uh, previous uh, three. Uh, because this is actually replacing a session at the workshop. And uh, workshops are um, meant to be something which is more practical, hands-on, uh, more interactive. And therefore, we were even discussing whether to hold this webinar now or to postpone this workshop for, for later. But we do not know when this later could be. And uh, as there are quite many developments uh, concerning the SD mix and the data transmission and countries um, piloting and trying this on in practice, actually transferring SDG data. So we thought it would be very good to inform countries about uh, this. Uh, so before we go to the actual uh, webinar, so just also as a reminder, a few housekeeping uh, items. Uh, first of all, we are recording the webinar, so it will be available on the web afterwards. Um, the papers and presentations for the webinar are on the web in English and Russian. And there are also some background papers which even not will be uh, presented today, but all this useful information is accessible. So we are asking all participants to mute their microphones and please disable video when you are not speaking. But for all the presenters, we are asking that when they are answering questions and when they are not running their presentation, to please put on the video because it is so much easier to follow what people are saying when you can actually see them. And it is so nice to see all of you. Uh, pr please provide the questions and comments via chat. Uh, you can provide there also additional information or links to additional information because this chat will be saved together with the webinar and we will make this also available on the, on the web. Uh, so with this, Again, I wish you all a very interesting and useful webinar, and I give floor to Anne. So go ahead, and, and thank you. Thank you, Tina. I hope everyone can hear me okay. So, so hello, everyone. Um, I'm delighted to be moderating the webinar, and uh, like you, I'm sure, I am really looking forward to the presentations today. Uh, when we were originally planning the face-to-face -face meetings in Budapest, this session was due to cover data transmission and regional reporting, so, so a very potential topic area. With the move to a webinar format, it was decided to focus the presentations today on data transmission and particularly on SDMX, given the more recent developments. Uh, however, we do have background papers available from on the events page on experiences of regional reporting within the Eurasian Economic Union and the CIS. So I'd like to draw your attention to these two and pass on our thanks to the contributors. So a uh, final reminder again, please, to post any questions you have via the online chat, and I'll raise those questions once the presentations have finished. So now it's time for our first presentation. And I'd like to introduce Abdullah from the UN Statistics Division and Lucy from the Office of National Statistics. And they're going to give us an introduction and overview of STMX, 
the work of the SDMX Working Group and the tools and platforms available for exchanging data in SDMX. Over to you, Lucy and Abdullah. Um, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is Abdullah Gazal from the United Nations Statistics Division. I'm a statistician and I've been working on SDMX for many years. And uh, for the last five years, my focus has been the um, SDMX SDGs Working Group. And I'm here with Lucy. Willem, would you like to introduce yourself, Lucy? Hello, Lucy. Lucy, we cannot hear you. She's muted. She has to unmute herself. Hi. Sorry, oh, I was uh, just trying to find the uh, mute button. Hi, so um, I'm Lucy Gullum. Uh, as Anne said, I'm from the UK Office for National Statistics. I'm working on the uh, same with our goals team there, and in particular on the uh, data website and open SDG and I've had some experience with uh, using XDMX as we've been trying to implement it into uh, open SDG and in the UK as well as um, providing support to some other countries. Okay, <clears throat> thanks very much Lucy. So let's go on, let's move to the first, sli uh, first slide. Okay, so SDMX, which stands for Statistical Data and Metadata Exchange, it has been around for many years, and it's an initiative which is sponsored by seven international organizations, um, like BIS, European Central Bank, OECD, Eurostat, IMF, the World Bank, and the United Nations. Um, so the objective of SDMX is to standardize data and metadata exchange to facilitate uh, data and metadata exchange between and among international organizations and countries. And um, it's a suite of standards, but um, the important thing to understand is that SDMX by itself uh, does not tell you um, how to structure the data. I mean, uh, it, uh, sorry, it does tell you how to structure the data, but the structuring is, uh, needs, still needs to be done. Sort of like uh, when you have a database, you still need to create a database structure. So when you, you use it, uh, SDMX, you need to create uh, a structure for your statistical data to be able to exchange it. So these structures are called data structure definitions, ESDs, and metadata structure definitions for data and metadata respectively. And uh, they can be developed by anyone, but uh, importantly, they're also developed at the global level for global data and metadata exchange in areas such as national accounts, labor, SDGs, education, and uh, others. And uh, what's important about SDMX is that, uh, aside from the global DSGs that facilitate data exchange and dissemination, there's also a growing, I mean, a very large and growing, still growing body of tools that support that. Next slide, Lucy, please. Lucy, next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. So um, the SDMX, uh, the Working Group on SDMX for SDG Indicators was established by the IIG SDG in 2016, and uh, the objectives of the Working Group are to develop data and metadata structure definitions for uh, SDG indicators, and uh, as well as data exchange mechanisms for those. So, the first meeting took place in late, late 2016. We had a pilot in 2018, and um, the first official SDG data structure definition was released uh, last year, and uh, the trapped uh, metadata structure definition uh, is uh, now uh, now exists. We you know we will undertake a uh, the a pilot metadata exchange through this year and plan to release the official metadata structure definition at the end of 2020. Next slide, please. So at the center or at the hub of global SDG Data Exchange is the uh, SDG Global Platform, which is maintained by UNSD. And the global SDG Global Platform essentially consists of two parts. One is the global SDG Indicators database. If you go to the, UN, the UNSD SDG website, this is the database that you will see. 
it's maintained and updated by the statistics division and it's um, it has both country level regional and global aggregates and uh, it has data from the custodian agencies from the official custodian agencies uh, for SDG indicators the data in the uh, database is harmonized and harmonization is what makes possible the regional and global aggregation and regional and global monitoring another part of um, the global platform is SDG Lab. And the SDG Lab has two actually primary purposes. One is to facilitate data exchange. So it's sort of the uh, SDG Lab is a data exchange arm of the global platform. But aside from that, Data Lab also provides Horizon's uh, functionality. Unlike the global indicated database, SDG Lab accepts data from both countries and uh, custodian agencies and it accepts data only in the SDMX format, and um, it provides comparisons between the global and national data sets. So the countries who submit their data to the um, SDG lab, uh, they can uh, compare their national indicators against the, uh, their indicators against the global uh, data set. Um, so the um, reporting to the global, global SDG indicators database is mandatory. Um, and the custodian agencies are mandated to report SDG indicators and reporting to the SDG lab is voluntary uh, by the country. Next slide, please. So in a little bit further detail, uh, the, uh, the, to go over the objectives of the SDG lab. The objective is, to, you know, it, it's a lot of exchange of SDG indicator data, and we are working on um, metadata exchange for both countries and custodian agencies. National data provided by the countries can be compared against the global data provided by the custodian agencies. And the objective is to gradually replace other forms of data submission to the UNSG SDG global platform. So at this moment, uh, as we will say, I will talk later. Uh, a majority of custodian agencies report using um, Excel. However, we expect that gradually they will uh, migrate to SDMX reporting. Hopefully most of them, although some of the smaller agencies may not have the capacity to report uh, using SDMX. And uh, we are very grateful to the United Kingdom and uh, its Department for International Development because it's with uh, their support that we were able to develop a CD lab. Next slide, please. So here you have, you can see the um, data flows for uh, SDG reporting. On the right, we have the harmonized global data flows and we have agencies such as ILO, UNICEF, the World Bank, uh, who are already submitting that data as well as um, other in the future like OECD, perhaps Paris 21 and others. Um, they report their data, they in SDMX um, against the harmonized global data flow. Um, the SDMX data goes into the SDG lab, after which this harmonized data is submitted to the SDG global database for validation. As I said, a majority of agencies still submit their data in Excel directly to the SDG global database, which was designed for that purpose. So whether the harmonized data is submitted through by SDMX or Excel, it ends up in the global database where it is validated. Once it's been validated, it's published and the validated global data set returns to SDG lab for comparison uh, with the country data. On the left-hand side, you can see the country global data flow where countries uh, can submit their data in SDMX directly to the SDG lab. Once it's submitted to the SDG lab, the data is not validated. You cannot validate country data um, beyond the structural, simple structural validation. So it goes into the SDG lab and then it's um, um, compared against the global data set. Um, go on, please. So, to make things even slightly more complex, um, when we talk about the SDG DSGs, we have the global SDG data structure definition developed by both countries and custodian agencies. So sorry, um, we have the global SDG data structure definition, which is the DSD uh, developed by the SDMX SDG uh, working group. 
The global SDG DSD only supports uh, indicators from the global data set, and it is used by both countries and custodian agencies to submit their data to the SDG lab through the global data set. So only the official global SDG indicators and their disaggregation are supported. However, the General Assembly Resolution on 2030 for uh, Agenda for Sustainable Development explicitly calls for national ownership of um, uh, SDG monitoring and calls for in indicators that are customized for the national context. And indeed, the majority of countries have national SDG indicators in addition to those in the global um, framework. So for that purpose, the working group developed guidance on how the global data structure definitions can be extended with national indicators and their disaggregation. The countries are free to create their own national customized data structure definitions with their own um, disaggregation and uh, indicators. Then they can establish their own data flows. They can publish that national data. However, it cannot go to the SDG lab, which only accepts data from the global um, um, using the global DSD. Um, so this is important. The global DSD is used for global reporting, both by countries and agencies, uh, to the SDG lab. National DSDs are developed individually by each country for their own context, with their own customizations, and are used to disseminate the data, but it cannot be used to transmit the data to the SDG lab. Next slide, please. And now I uh, give it to Lucy to continue the presentation. Lucy, go ahead. Thanks, Abdullah. Okay, so uh, Abdullah has talked about some of the concepts which are involved with implementing XTMX and using XTMX to report SDG data, but I'm just going to talk about some of the tools which can help with the implementation. So there's quite a few free tools which are available which cover a range of different data setups. So for example, whether you have your data stored in a database, or if you don't, or if your data is in CSV format, Excel format, or some other for format, then there's such a range of tools. There should be something to suit your needs to help you with the implementation. So here we've just listed um, some of the free commonly used tools, which have been um, created by some of the organizations which are involved with XDMX. So we've got um, Eurostat's XTMX Converter and IDO Smart. Both of these tools can be used to convert different file types to XTMX. So for example, from Excel, CSV, and some other formats, they're slightly different in their use. Um, some more information about all of these tools are available on the XTMX website where they have a dedicated page about the tools. So if you want to find out some more information, go there. But then on to um, Eurostat's XDMX reference infrastructure. This would be used where you have your data in a database rather than in individual data files. So uh, this tool can be used to map the database to the GSD and then used to establish an XDMX API. And then finally, the ones we've got listed here, we've got um, ILO DSD constructor and OECD's XDMX matrix generator. Both of these can be used to maintain and generate DSDs. So we Abdul mentioned um, customizing the global DSD for national use. These are the sort of tools you'd use there. And then I'm just going to talk about um, two of the different scenarios which you may be in when implementing XMX. So um, if you have your data in a database, versus not having data in a database. So if you do have your data in a database, this is the most efficient scenario when implementing XDMX. As I said in the previous slide, you can use tools to map the database to the DSD, and then the full XDMX API will be available. And then once this process has sort of been done, this first part, you can, as long as other the other applications that you want to use have the functionality is then possible to connect to the API. So for example, if you want to pull data into a national reporting platform or the SDG lab that Abdullah previously mentioned. And it's also more efficient than the other scenario, which I'll go on to in a little bit, when it comes to updating data. So once 
the data has been updated in the database, the data will um, also be available in the, in, on the API as is automatically uh, pulled in. The last part then, so again, from the API to the applications, this process can also be quite easy and automated as um, even though the application, so say the SDG lab or open SDG, the website would need to be refreshed, but this is something that can be scheduled to go on every day or every hour. So it's sort of um, easy, quite easy to keep up to date. And then um, if your data is not in a database, we have a slightly different process, which is less efficient and requires more manual steps. So in this case, instead of mapping your database to the SDG DSD, you'd map your individual data files. And then once you've got that mapping, you can use one of the tools that we previously mentioned, so XMX Converter or ILO Smart to convert the input file, so whether it's CSV or Excel, into an XMX uh, format, so maybe XMX ML or XMX. JSON, uh, and then again, once you get to this stage, then so you have your files in the XMX format. Instead of the data being pulled in from an API, you'd have to individually, um, you'd have to upload these files manually to your applications. So to open SDG or SDG Lab. And when it comes to data in, data in this scenario, depends on the structure of the data, so whether it's in wide format or long format, so whether you have multiple um, values per row or if you have one value per row, the input files may need to be remapped each time. So where you have your data in the long format, um, after in the data might be uh, more simple, so easy to map and maintain then even when you've got past the mapping uh, phase, every time you update a, a file, it's going to need to be reconverted and re-uploaded to any applications that you're using. Uh, so then I'm going to talk about uh, OpenS DG a little bit. This is just one example of a platform which can be used to disseminate and visualize SDG data, which is in uh, XDMX format. So OpenS DG is an open source SDG uh, reporting platform, which is um, free to reuse. And it currently has the functionality for XDMX input. So currently, um, the countries can either upload data in XDMX ML format or XDMX JSON format, and can also connect to XDMX APIs using OpenSDG. Uh, and then as you can see in the diagram, the output of this currently is the visualizations which are available on the platform, but also the standardized data in machine readable format. So even though uh, data can also be inputted into OpenSDG and CSV format, the uh, advantage of using XMX over the CSV is that even though at the moment technically the output isn't XDMX, it's the data is still standardized. And um, further from that, soon the functionality for XDMX download will also be added to OpenSDG. So this where countries have inputted their data in XDMX format, they'll also be able to give platform users the option to download XDMX files directly from the platform, which can help with simplifying data exchange. And um, the final slide we've got today, we're just going to talk about a little um, a little bit about the work Kyrgyzstan has done. So Kyrgyzstan is just one country which has began implementing XDMX and has taken advantage of some of the tools that have, we've mentioned so far. So um, Kyrgyzstan began implementing XDMX in May 2019, and since then they've come a long way and are now uh, confident in using the tools and have um, a number of national and global indicators available in XDMX format. So out of the tools we've mentioned so far, 
they use the XDMX matrix generator provided by OECD for maintaining and generating their DSD, their national uh, coastline DSD, and then to create their XDMX ML files, they use your stats XDMX converter, and then they also use OpenSTG, which I mentioned in the previous slide, where they upload their XDMX ML files. So in this diagram, uh, you can sort of see the two data flow, uh, sorry, data flows that Kyrgyzstan has set up. So they've got the one for the full national SDG data set, which is loaded to the Open SDG platform, and then the one for the uh, global SDG data set, so where the data complies with the global DSD, which goes to the SDG lab. And uh, that's it from us. Thank you very much. Thank yes. you very much. Uh, Lucy and just, Abule. Yeah, yeah no, just the last words. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, to, thank you to the UNSC for giving us this opportunity to present, and the many thanks to the participants who defied the um, epidemic to participate in this event. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, as per the agenda, we're going to move on to our next uh, presentation. But just a reminder, if you do have any questions for any of the presentations, then please do pop them into the chat function. We do have some questions that were submitted earlier um, as well. But if you have further questions, then please do pop them in the chat function. And after the next presentation, we'll have an opportunity to ask the presenters who've spoken so far. So um, next on the agenda, I'd like to introduce Claire Plateau from the National Institute of Statistics and Economic Studies in France. And Claire will be taking a more detailed look at the SDG Data Lab, and in particular, France's experiences piloting it. So if I can hand over to you, Claire. Yes, thank you, Anne. I will try to share my screen. Application okay. or screen you, I have to, to share? Share application? I believe no. application, but let's just see see whatever you can. Uh... Yeah. It is better, Larry, if you share your uh, screen, if you have already the uh, presentation of questions. Thank you. Ready. I don't. Is it good? Do you hear me? Is it good? Uh, yes, and we saw the screen. Yes. Go on. Share it okay. again. Thank you. Abdullah and Lucy have just presented the SDG Data Lab. On uh, Claire, 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 your, uh, your presentation disappeared from the screen. Ah. I, mm. I yeah, we can hear you, but we can't see anything at the oh, moment. I don't know why, because it is on my screen. I I will close it and try to reopen. Okay. Yes. Maybe, I'm... maybe I can do the I can do the share screen share oh, presentation yes. from from my yes. side, and you can just. Tell me when to turn. Yes, okay, fine. Oh, no, no, I lose my. Yes, okay. Uh, the first slide, please. Donc, Abdullah and Lucy have just presented the SDG Data Lab on its technical aspect on how it works. Now, my presentation will focus more on its functional aspects on how the SDGs Data Lab can help for data transmission. Next, uh, yes, good. First, I would like to remind you shortly, what is the Data Lab? The SDG Data Lab is an online platform established by UNESD to allow the exchange of SDGs 
indicators, data and metadata by countries and custodium agencies with UNSD. It is to allow comparison of national data provided by countries against data provided by international organizations. And it is to gradually replace all other forms of data submission from custodian agency and countries to the UNSD Global SDG Indicator Database. This data lab was decided to answer a request of the 2017 UN Statistical Commission, which was to present international and national data side by side in order to facilitate dialogue between countries and custodian agencies to explain discrepancies and to improve coordination. Next slide, please. Yes. Why a data lab? For which goals? By putting country and agency data side by side, it will increase transparency of data improve internationally comparability and data availability. This will help to reconcile two points of view. The point of view of agencies, which focus on cross-country comparability and compliance with international standards. The point of view of NSOs, which are the main source informing policy analysis and decision making at national level, and which focus on the comparability and consistency of country specific data published in the global SDGs database, and which are very visible with their own data in their national SDGs database. But you can understand, metadata must accompany, accompany, accompany the data to explain differences that might exist. Without metadata, discrepancies will remain unexplained and misleading, as there are many valid reasons why country-level data reported by international agencies and reported by countries are different. I would like to take one example concerning, for instance, informal work. Statistics on informality are key to assessing the quality of employment in, a, in an economy and are relevant to developing and develop countries alike. Countries may use a national definition relevant for its own context and useful for the policymakers but different from the international definition and methods of computation. Nevertheless, these both measures are very useful and a better understanding of these two measure measurements are very useful. Next slide, please. But the SDG, no, there is a slide just before, yes. But the SDGs Data Lab is still a work in progress. At this time, without appropriate metadata, the SDG Data Lab can't be made available to a wide audience. A draft global metadata structure, MSD, for the SDG indicators was agreed by the SDMX Working Group end of December 2019. The release of the first official version of the MSD is planned at the end of the year, taking into account feedbacks from current pilot metadata exchanges. An authoring tool which will facilitate the compilation and allow the exchange of metadata in SDMX format is expected to become available in the second half of 2020. The opportunity to comprehensively analyze any differences is low now without metadata, even if the SDGs DSD provides 
information on the quality of data reported by the custodian agencies. For instance, we have information on the nature of data. Is it country data, country adjusted model data? And uh, footnotes are also provided concerning time series or observations. Now, let's come and visit the SDGs Data Lab. Next slide. The Data Lab is accessed, accessible through a web browser. Today, a user from a country has only access to upload and view its national data of its country and to generate comparison with the already published global data. Next slide, please. Yes. Then you accede to this web page with different buttons, you see. To upload data, you have a button which the name is Data Importer, bottom number five. To analyze data, bottom number one, you can also select your country and the type of information you want to get. For instance, here it is for Uganda, concerning international or national data. You have two, 202 series. When a series is available, its name is written in bold. Next slide, please. Then, how to upload data into the SDGs Data Lab. You need to use the button Data Importer, number five, I'll show you at once. French country level data was uploaded using an SDMX IP based on the global SDG DSD. It is also possible to drag and drop an SDMX data file onto the page within the specific, specified area. But you need to be aware that national SDG DSDs are not supported. Only global SDGs indicators reported by countries can be uploaded in the SDG Data Lab. There is no national SDGs indicators in the SDGs Data Lab because it is of no use. There is no comparison with the global SDG data. If it is uh, succeed, success, successfully sorry, uploaded, a confirmation message is displayed. Global SDGs data reported by agencies are already uploaded in the SDGs data lab, but are only available when UNSD published this data. When country level data are uploaded, it is immediately processed and comparison with the already UNSD published global data available. Now, next slide, please. Thank you. What we get when data are uploaded? For France, it was a test based only on three country level series which were uploaded. We see we have in the in this slide either international or national data. We see we have 276 series, both international or national data. But now next slide. And only three series, which are both international and uh, international and national data. Then, then next slide, we get easily comparison of country level data by the agency and the country. The series analysis consists of a column graph, data table, download buttons, and filter controls. On the same graph, we have both the global and national series and the deviation between the two series. You see, we can da download this series as Excel or CVS series or copy to the clipboard. By clicking on each row of the data table, you can view the footnotes and sources of both the global and national data for the selected data point. But if no footnotes footnotes or sources were provided, none will be displayed. 
I have presented just some examples of what we can do with the SDGs Data Lab at the, that state of development. But you can see it is a very useful platform. It, it is very friendly and new functionality will probably be developed. Next slide, please. Yes, thank you. The SDG Lab, as I said, is a very friendly and intuitive platform. You can see SDMX not only facilitates data exchanges, but also greatly simplifies the comparison since both the global and national data sets follow the same DSD. It is a little investment, I agree, but it is worth it. Moreover, to facilitate highest rates of adoption of SDMX exchange among reporters, including both countries and international agencies, the SDMX working group will develop an information site with links to the DSD and MSD, technical documents, tutorials, and a non-technical guide on how to start with the implementation of SDG data flows in SDMX, share good practices, questions, and so on. I would like to say the IEG SDGs took a lot of time to agree with agencies on the management of data flows. Here, UNSD provides a tool able to help data transmission, common understanding, and able to make progress towards harmonization of data whenever it is necessary. Next slide. Yeah, here you can see the current state of the SDMX platform, where you can find the DSD uh, guidelines for customing, customizing the global DSD, and it will be complemented by tutorial and a lot of information very useful to implement as they mix data flows. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Claire. So, um, and th so we've now got some time for some questions on the agenda. So um, we've got a question that's come up from Tina, um, and I've had this question put to me as well. So um, can any country already use the data lab? What are the prerequisites? Do you need SEMX capability or can it be done also in another way? So I'm not sure if that question is best to perhaps to Abdullah with Claire contributing if needed. Yes, I think Abdullah is a better place to see what he, because he gives authorization. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, uh, once again, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for the question. Uh, yes, uh, the SDG Lab is open to all countries. Uh, it is, uh, you do need authorization, so you need to write to us to receive a username and password. Uh, after which, you can upload your data in SDMX. And yes, uh, SDMX is a prerequisite. You need to map your data to the global uh, SDG data structure definition, converted, obtained, obtained uh, um, SDMX in compliance with the global GSD, and then you can submit it to the uh, um, SDG lab and compare uh, your data to the global data set. Okay, thank you, Abdullah. So can I just ask um, a follow-up on that then? So I know Claire mentioned she was part of the pilot and you said other countries do have access, but is, is the data lab still in the pilot phase then? Um, so would pe people be coming part of the pilot or is it is it actively being used now? Um, it is actually both. It is actively used, but as is the case with the um, SDGs, uh, you have to kind of build your ship while, or build your airplane while you're, while you are already flying. So it is being developed constantly, um, but it is using the um, official release of the global uh, data structure definition, and uh, the global GSD is published, and people can use. Uh, their data against the official global DSD and then upload to the SDG lab for comparison. But it's growing, the functionality is being built uh, and expanded. Uh, for example, we're working on metadata exchange to soon come. So um, it is uh, open to everyone and it is, while it is still being built, uh, you know, the functionality is there. Mm -hmm. 
for comparison. Okay. Thanks, Abdullah. Um, we had one question posted ahead of uh, the events, which um, I wanted to raise here. I know we don't have a session on national reporting platforms, but it might be relevant given the stuff on the data lab and SDMX. And that was, are there tools and platforms available to countries that could be used if a country's capacity is low in capturing and reporting SDGs? I'm not sure whether you want to say something again on that, potentially, Abdullah, given your experience with the UNSD DFID project as well. Um, yes, I mean, um, I think in our presentation, we outlined some scenarios. One is scenario with an existing database where the um, uh, infrastructure is in place, and the other is uh, where you can use Excel to convert your data to SDMX. So the second, this second scenario is basically has very low requirements. All you need to do is Microsoft Office and uh, um, a free, essentially download and install a free software from your site. From there, you can map and uh, uh, proceed with uh, conversion your data to SDMX, after which you can both submit it to SDG Lab or you can use platforms such as uh, Open SDGs. Uh, to get your data published, so, because as DMX does simplify the publication of your data. In support of that, we will be expanding the um, uh, page of the SDMX Strategies Working Group to provide more tutorials, more information on uh, how you can um, map which tools you can use and how you can map your data to SDMX and how you can make use of that. Okay, thanks, Abdullah. Um, and I see we did have some questions that, that you've already answered, which is about online courses and tutorials for using STMX. I see that some links shared there. Um, and when we come to our, our later presentation today, Miriam will be talking about the team on data transmission and the resources um, we're trying to use there. So not to create um, materials, but to promote and share materials. So I'm sure Miriam will touch on what's available in that as well. So, okay, thank you, Abdullah. So um, just a reminder, if anyone does have any questions, keep them coming in the chat function, and then we will ask them um, when we get to the next uh, set of presentations. So if I could ask you to turn your video off then, please, Abdullah, and we'll move to our next presentation. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Nazira from the National Statistical Committee of the Kyrgyz Republic. And Nazira is going to talk through the Kyrgyzstan experience of using SDMX and the data structure definition for data transmission. Okay, are you there, Nazira? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, feel free to share your screen if you can. Mm. Right, content is starting to come through. Yeah, if you want to go into slideshow oh. mode. Perfect, thank you. Over to you, Nazira, thank you. Um. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, dear participants of today's webinar. Uh, let me shortly share um, Kyrgyzstan experience in using SDMX and data structure definition for data transmission. And first, I would like to emphasize that National Statistical Committee of the Kyrgyz Republic plays a key role in building a national reporting and monitoring system for SDG indicators. And within this work, uh, we are building a centralized system where the national statistical um, uh, collect uh, data from and uh, metadata from uh, different uh, sources and, and put in one place. So, <clears throat> uh, moreover, uh, national statistical committee coordinates all process uh, in the country led to SDG data and metadata. And uh, for today, we have national reporting system. Um, for us, it's uh, our open SDG platform. And <clears throat> for platform, uh, in the platform today, we have uh, all our uh, disseminated indicators in ASDMX format. And to UNSD DFID project, uh, we uh, and um, statistical office of UK, uh, we managed to pu uh, publish all our ADMX files, to cre uh, create ADMX files for the indicators and publish in our uh, platform. So, 
So, <clears throat> so uh, there are, of course, uh, a few reasons why we decided to use uh, uh, ADMX. Uh, first, it's a comparable data. Uh, so uh, all data, SDG data in, in our country is a global and national today in ADMX format. And uh, ADMX format follows the global uh, uh, SDG DSD. So uh, it can, uh, all our uh, data can be easily to be comparable uh, with another countries where uh, SDG DSD also was used. So um, also another reason uh, for us is reduced reporting burden. So <clears throat> it means that if uh, uh, SDG data in ADMX format, there is no further need to conver uh, conversion. So um, uh, the data can be uploaded as in open SDG platform, but also in other platforms as well. And uh, one of uh, big uh, advantages uh, of the SDMX format is that SDMX uh, supports uh, multi languages. So, uh, for example, in our uh, in our open SDG platform, <coughs> we have data in a few uh, language as. Uh, in English and Russian, and now we are working uh, on implementing Kyrgyz language. So GSD uh, is allowed us. So uh, also, <coughs> as was mentioned today in previous presentations, ADMX allow allow us to be transparency. So uh, the uniform GSD structure allows you any users uh, to read and correctly interpre interpret interpreted uh, SDG data from any sources. So uh, it's national, regional, or global. So another also uh, reason for us is implementing SDMX uh, through the all, uh, national statistical system. So we have ambition plans to implement SDMX formats for another uh, statistics as well uh, in, in our uh, future. So <clears throat> in using SDMX, uh, we use uh, two tools. So First tool is OECD SDMX matrix generators, which help us to create DSD from simple Excel files. And another uh, tool is use Eurostat SDMX converter tool, uh, which also allows to create um, SDMX files. Uh, so uh, all these uh, <coughs> SDMX fi uh, files make uh, uh, so then we can say that. Uh, uh, today we have two uh, data flows. One of them is national, another one is global. So uh, for national um, uh, data flows, uh, all the data flows goes to open SDG platform, and for global one, uh, it's uh, go uh, to uh, uh, SDG lab, which we mentioned before also. Uh, uh, so. Um, of course, uh, to implement and using SDMX is not easy, to be honestly, and also um, to to manage to uh, get such kind of results, <coughs> we had a huge support from UNSD and DFID project. Uh, we had a workshop um, and. Uh, in, SDM, in using SDMX, also thanks to uh, statistical office of UK, we had a workshop of uh, implementing SDMX files to open SDG. Uh, of course, we had a remote support from there, and I also separately would like to say thanks to Abdullah and Lucy for their huge support and uh, in our work. Uh, also, as a res uh, resources which were used in implementing SDMX. Uh, it's of course team uh, because <clears throat> we emphasize for ourselves that there is not only a statistician need to be part of team, but also you need some IT expert who can uh, support you in your work, and also <clears throat> uh, statistical specialists who really uh, understand uh, the data structure. And of course, as a data source, we need. Um, Basic things like a uh, computer and some uh, Michael's Ford Excel and an ADMX matrix generator, but it's not so uh, complicated part. But anyway, you will need. And during um, our whole process, uh, 
um, we had some challenges, of course, and so uh, I would like to say as, as a challenges, we understood the SDMX is a technical subject with a lot of uh, different concepts and tools. And as uh, uh, that I said, it's uh, highly disaggregated and DSD needs to be customized for national use. Um, it's a lesson uh, learned. I would like to say that <clears throat> It's very important to have very good staff and, of course, uh, to have very good support um, to work. And, of course, the max is quite a lot of time, so um, you need to invest some time for it. And as um, <clears throat> next steps, uh, uh, we are not going to stop on working on the SGMX uh, uh, files. Uh, we have a, a plan to implement um, SDMX RP uh, in, in, and using a platform such as DotStat or another platform as well. And also, <clears throat> uh, here I would like to say that uh, uh, nowadays, uh, our uh, in, in the future, uh, our SDG platform will allow uh, not only update SDMX files, but also will uh, help us to uh, uh, out, uh, output it as a SDMX file. So in this case, our users uh, can um, use um, uh, our SDG data in SDMX pharma for further work. So can create maps uh, or graphs or any kind of um, job. So I think it can, it, in this case, we can be very user uh, friendly. So. <clears throat> As a result of all our work, uh, I would like to say that uh, nowadays we have our open SDG platform, um, which is already uh, open sources. So there are, uh, we have some users who are already using our platforms, but uh, we would like to mention that it, it's still on uh, developing process and we have to um, finalize it. But anyway, for nowadays, we have around 100 uh, global SDMX uh, indicators and around 50 national SDMX uh, files. And all of them are updated in <coughs> our platform and uh, available for our uh, users. So it's this all very shortly. So I will be happy to answer any questions if you uh, have. <laughs> so. Thank you very much, Nazira. That was really interesting. Um, so we are going to have a couple more presentations, but just to remind if anyone has any questions to any of the presenters, if they could please pop them into the chat function. Thank you. Um, okay, so on to our next presentation. Um, and next to speak will be Anna from the National Statistics Institute in Spain. And Anna will talk us through the challenges and considerations in developing the national reporting platforms for further data transmission through SDMX. So, are you available there, Anna? Thanks, Anna. Uh, I'll over to you. Uh, I'm going to share the presentation. Can you see it? Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can see it. Yes. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm going to talk about the Spanish National Reported Platform for SDG and uh, why we decided to choose a similar structure to the National Summary Data Page Plus where files in SDMX format are disseminated. Well, first of all, I'm going to explain to you briefly what is the Special Data Dissemination Standard Plus. This is an initiative of the International Monetary Fund that uh, is useful to guide members, countries on the provision of economic and financial data to the public in support of domestic and international financial stability. It was launched in the year 2015, and at the beginning, just seven countries are adhering to the SDGs Plus. Uh, for instance, France, uh, Germany, Netherlands, uh, United States, and Spain was one of these countries. But currently, uh, there are 24 members uh, subscribing this initiative. One of the uh, requirements 
that is necessary to join the SDGs Plus is uh, to uh, have available a website named National Summary Data Page Plus, where the 27 categories are disseminated. These um, categories are related to real, fiscal, financial, and external sectors. For instance, the GDP, the Consumer Price Index, or government debt. And uh, it's also compulsory to provide information in SDMX <coughs> format. Uh, because uh, the International Monetary Fund uh, takes this information automatically uh, in this uh, format. Well, and then uh, when we started to prepare the national reporting platform, um, we took as reference the UNIS roadmap for SDGs and the guidelines for national reporting uh, platform. Um, the national reporting platform may adopt different approaches depending on the national circumstances and capabilities. In the case of Spain, it's under in a wide sense and complies the different objectives of gathering and disseminating data and metadata and in the future we expect to transmit uh, the data in SDMX format and uh, in order that could be automatically transmitted to custodian agencies or uh, other international organizations. And we also pursue the objective of being the, the, the national reporting plan platform be the only entry point for national information on SDG indicators. Then we realized that both the National Reporting Platform and the National Summary Data Plus had uh, some similarities. <clears throat> both of them uh, are located in a, in, in a website and a collect indicator produced by different ministries or agencies. Uh, by now, in, in the National Reporting Platform, we are uh, disseminating information from INE, but also from 10 ministries, and we expect to uh, include more uh, ministries in the production of SDG syndicator and uh, to include them in the platform. Uh, other characteristic in common uh, is that other feature in common is that uh, both of them require to disseminate data and metadata in a transparent manner. Uh, to provide users with concept definition and methodology. And uh, in the case of the SDGs Plus, adherent countries have to certify periodically their metadata to guarantee that this information is updated, is correct, or to make the necessary modification. And the third point the, is that um, the data uh, are demanded both by the public and by international organizations in different formats. So the information has to be disseminated for the public at a large in a friendly or a, a stable and graphics, but in parallel has to be reported to custodian agencies and international organizations in SDMX format. Then uh, I believe that the SDDS Plus is a good example of exchange of, uh, of, exchange, of data exchange and automatic transmission uh, on SDMX data flows. Which are the main strengths? Well, that the data are disseminated in SDMX files in parallel with the publication to general users. And the International Monetary Fund can download the SDMX files automatically the same precise date of their release. It means that the same date the data is made public to all the users with the pre-release, for instance, the GDP, then it is uh, uploaded in the NSDSP plus and, the, and, and again, the International Monetary Fund download this file automatically. And this way, the database of the IMF is always updated with the last information and uh, it avoids possible inconsistencies among national and international <laughs> databases. And uh, a fair strength is that the automation of the process reduces observant costs, both for the countries and for the IMF. Um, <clears throat> then, as we see, that, as we saw that the national reporting platform and the NSDP plus 
had uh, many features in common, and the National Summary Database Plus has been proven to be an effective system in which uh, 24 countries are involved. Uh, it disseminates various indicators. Most of them are monthly or quarterly, so the frequency of the data flows is higher, it has a higher uh, frequency than the SDG indicator, which are structural. And uh, it also collects information from independent agencies. So we think it's an effective system. And uh, then we think that it's a good example for uh, the future uh, SDG transmission of information to the custodian agency. So we decided to follow a similar structure in the design of the national reporting uh, platform. In this slide, uh, you can see how the Spanish national reporting platform is structured. For its goal, we present of the target and indicator. This is only uh, a piece, it's not the whole goal one. But uh, here you can see that we have for each indicator in the same line all the information because it's allowed to add a new column, as see here in the right, where we could add the SDMX format file that is not available yet. And uh, it's similar to the National Summary Data Page Plus that we have here uh, down. We have the indicator, we saw the breakdown, the unit, similar like this, the unit, the latest data and the previous one, like here, the difference is that for previous, the previous data was here substituted by the year 2015 because it was the year that is, uh, marked the beginning of the Agenda 2030. And here we have some information for the results or to download information. And uh, I think that's a very important aspect here is what our colleague, my colleagues have commented previously about the um, uh, that, uh, definition, the data structure definition which was released uh, last year, and also the metadata structure definition, which is expected for um, the end of uh, this year. So we think uh, these are uh, very good news for the uh, automation of this DMX data transmission of the DG indicator that will facilitate a, a, a more effective dissemination of the DG indicator. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Anna. That was really interesting. So um, we're going to move to our final presentation shortly. But just a reminder, if there are any questions to any of the speakers, then please do post them in the chat. OK, so for our final presentation today, we're going to hand over to Miriam um, from Dystasis, who is also uh, my fellow co-chair of the task team on data transmission. Um, so Miriam is going to tell us a little bit about the work of the uh, task team and the outputs to date to support SDG reporting. So are you there, Miriam? Yes. Okay. So let's hand over to you for you to share your screen. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Anne. Um, uh, I want to share with you a bit about the ongoing work of the task team on data transmission. First off, we're a small group comprising colleagues from Belarus, France, uh, Kyrgyzstan, Poland, Russian Federation, and also WHO. And um, several of them have been presenting to us today. <laughs> uh, the aim of the task team on data transmission is to facilitate facilitate SDG data transmission by exchanging knowledge and experiences on the application of transmission standards and tools that make the automatization of data transmission possible. So, um, for example, SMX and APIs. Pretty much many of the things this webinar today is about. So, what do we do? Or better to say, what have we achieved so far? Um, one of the things we are aiming to achieve is to set up an information portal on data transmission on the UNICE wiki, not to duplicate any work that has been done, but instead kind of have an, an information hub linking to relevant materials, websites, and so on. And at the same time, providing a low-level, easy-to-understand introductory information into the topic. What have we got so far? It's still in the making. But um, 
on the UNIT E wiki in the statistics for SDG section, um, as a slide here. There you can find under the um, steering group the task team on data transmission. Um, and well, I would say it's a start to an information portal. We have here under the external resources uh, all the links that, for example, have been shared in the task. And um, we'll probably be adding the links of today's presentations and papers as well, as far as long as that's okay with the presenters, that is. And um, we have complemented this with a FAQ section. And um, here, for example, the first question, what is SMX? Um, the idea is to explain things really at a low threshold level using existing material. For example, you might know these slides. Um, I think they're from Eurostat. Uh, where SMX data collection is compared to a box of oranges. Um, it's a pretty intuitive thing. Um, but besides explaining technical terms, we go a bit further and try to align potential applications and also benefits of APIs, but also requirements and many potential trade-offs. So any comments, ideas, links to materials, and so on are more than welcome. So any relevant information we get, we'll be adding to the site. And I think that this evolving nature is very important since um, technical developments tend to be really quick. The second goal we have set us is to gather experiences, uh, to gather and share experience through case studies. Yet again, we do not want to duplicate any work, especially considering all the work that the IAG SDG Working Group on SMX is doing that Abdullah has been talking about and all the work going on there. Instead, we want to kind of refer to the work, reference to it. Here, for example, uh, in the case studies section, <laughs> we have a link to a case study done by Ireland in a completely different context on using Python, but it also contains an application of an API, so we just link it there. Um, so far, uh, from the task team, we have one case study by the UK. Um, and the idea is to share in a concise and hands-on fashion uh, lessons learned um, that might be relevant to others. And as you can see with the UK case study, it's pretty short, but on point. So if somebody, anybody would be willing to do a case study, I think Anna and me will be very happy. Um, the third aim uh, that we put ourselves is to use so-called user stories to analyze needs um, with the aim to foster, foster understanding. But let me start with the technicality here. What is user stories? Um, a user story is a short description of a specific requirement of a service by a certain user. They're, they are used, for example, in software development, and they're always written in the same format. So as a type of user, I need to do something so that I can achieve goals. So for example, as a custodian agency, I need country SDG data so that I can provide country, regional, and global SDG data to Unity. The, the idea of user stories is that's not about wishes, but about needs. Um, so while the structure is pretty easy and pretty simple, really talking about needs is it gets hard and um, but the 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 pro it's an iterative process so it, it starts at the general level and with each iteration it gains more detail and more depth so it's kind of a try and error thing as well um as i said before the aim of of this user story is uh, to foster understanding so that um we hopefully might avoid features situations as, for example, countries building up national reporting platforms, but custodian agencies not being able to use them since they need uh, separate numerator and denominator data in order to be aggregate, to aggregate the data. But often on NRP, we did as well, uh, we only present the end results. So to avoid these, let's call them misunderstandings, or uh, that's our hope. Or, for example, um, our Unity colleagues, Tina and Stella, uh, said that, that in order to be able to use the data provided on, on national reporting platforms, they would need a 
bulk download feature instead of having to download for each indicator a separate time series. So these little things that become big things. Um, as you can see here, uh, we have draft user stories for uh, custodian agencies and Unity, thanks to Tina and Stella, and um, National Statistical Office. But they're really at the beginning. Um, so iteration zero or maybe one. Um, and here uh, you can see the, the user story, draft user story for uh, NSOs. So it always starts with an epic level user story, so the user story at the highest level, and then it goes down into more detail. Always following the same structure as an SO I need, so that. So all I can say, please have a look and comment. And that leads me to my last slide. Uh, what can I say? Uh, we need your input, knowledge, thoughts, ideas, comments, and experience. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. So, um, and yeah, I would just echo that plea um, that the team on data transmission was set up um, by Tina um, to meet the needs of the UNSC uh, countries and organizations to share information on this. So, um, we will gladly share information if people have suggestions and links, uh, country experiences and case studies for us to share. So we will take some of the material from today and make sure that's available and the links that were provided. So um, we've reached the end of all our presentations today. So this is one last opportunity in the webinar for you to ask any questions if you have any questions for any of the presenters. So. Um, while I'm giving you a moment to do that, I just wanted to say uh, a final thank you to Tina and especially to Stella for all their help in setting up the webinars. Stella has played um, a key role in organising the webinar today and, as I'm sure you would agree, has done an absolutely fantastic job in organising all of the sessions. So, I am not seeing any more questions coming up. Um, I would suggest that if you do think of questions after the webinar, um, if you are viewing this later or if you think of things, then feel free to um, put those to us at the uh, task team and we will try and share relevant information um, to, to get answers to those. So if there's nothing further and no further questions, then I will hand back to you to say a few final words then, Tina. Uh, okay, so uh, great. Uh, I think there was a lot of uh, interesting and very useful information again, and, and we are really delighted to see the progress with this uh, uh, data lab and that it uh, will be really possible to put uh, there side by side the country data and uh, then data that is uh, uh, made comparable. Um, and adjusted by the uh, custodian agencies. Uh, because this problem that there are different data, different figures available for the same um, uh, indicators on the websites of uh, NSOs and on the websites of international organizations, this is a very old problem. I remember this being discussed uh, at the level of the Statistical Commission and already I think like 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And now, thanks to SDGs and measuring SDGs, uh, everybody is pushed to work closer together. And uh, through these developments and through really being able to, to see and compare the data and understand why it differs, which is um, provided by countries and which is uh, that provided by international organizations, this really helps us uh, closer to uh, solving this problem. Because very often there are, there are legitimate reasons why these data are different, uh, but then we need to understand the reasons and we need to know why it is uh, not comparable, what to do to make it comparable and, and so on. Um, Thank you for all the participants, the presenters. We had at peak moment, we had 66 uh, people participating. 
uh, today's webinar was a little bit more technical, but I think there was a, was a lot of uh, things to take away which are of uh, practical uh, use. Um, Stella will send you all and also to the participants from the um, previous webinars a link to an evaluation questionnaire where we would like you to share then your opinion. Uh, how did you see the webinars? Did you find them useful? Uh, was it worth doing them? Because also prepare, preparing the webinars is, uh, is uh, uh, quite some work and it's, I would not even say that it's easier than preparing the, um, the physical meeting, just it's a different kind of, kind of work. Uh, but uh, the advantage is that they will, uh, the recordings will uh, remain available uh, for everyone also for later. But we would like to know, yes, your opinion, your comments, any proposals concerning the, the webinars so that we can uh, improve in future. And so with this, thank you all for attention and uh, goodbye and looking forward to meet also in future, hopefully uh, through some webinars that at some point uh, surely uh, being able to meet uh, person to person. Okay, thank you and bye.